The International Day of the Air Traffic Controller not only marks the anniversary of the International Federation of Air Traffic Controllers Association, which was founded on October 20, 1961. It also celebrates the men and women who 24-7 help make air travel the safest possible mode of transport. Air traffic controllers have an incredible amount of responsibility and the profession is subject to some of the strictest physical and mental medical requirements, making it one that is consistently regarded around the world as one of the most challenging. On the show, we take a look at how these professionals navigate their way in Nigeria's aviation industry, plus sites from the world's longest flight landing in Sydney, Australia. A warm welcome to Vision this week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Uketumbi, and our flight is set for boarding. It's been called the most stressful job in the world and one that does not give room for errors. In this vast office space are air traffic controllers coordinating the movement of air traffic to ensure that aircraft stay safe distances apart. While air traffic controllers typically do the following, Issue landing and takeoff instructions to pilots, monitor and direct the movement of aircraft on the ground and in the air using radar, computers or visual references, there's more to their daily activity. The first thing you do is to check the logbook for the status of equipment and the facility that you use to carry out your operations. Thereafter, you check for no times as noticed to airmen whether there have been changes in status of these facilities. And if there have been changes in status, you find out uh, alternative means to carry out your control. Thereafter, the man on seat will brief you on the traffic situation, the positions of the flight, and if there's any uh, operational matter cooking. Once you are in picture, he signs hand over watch and you uh, append your signature that you have taken over watch. Controllers usually manage multiple aircraft at the same time and must make quick decisions to ensure the safety of the aircraft. For example, a controller might direct one aircraft on its landing approach while providing another aircraft with weather information. Uh, really, as an air traffic controller, you must be able to do up to five things at the same time and do them perfectly well. You must be able to listen, as you are listening, you must be able to transmit. As you are transmitting, you must be able to write. As you are writing, you must be able to uh, think faster than the jet. I know an average jet uh, uh, will fly uh, up to 800 kilometers in an hour. So you have to be faster than that aircraft. And so you have to be able to coordinate with other ATC facility at the same time. Air traffic controllers also have specific areas of concentration like tower controllers, they direct the movement of vehicles on runways and taxiways. They check flight plans, give pilots clearance for takeoff or landing, and direct the movement of aircraft and other traffic on the runways and other parts of the airport. Most work are done from the control towers, as they generally must be able to see the traffic they control. Approach and departure controllers ensure that aircraft traveling within an airport's airspace maintain minimum separation for safety. They give clearances to enter controlled airspace and hand off control of aircraft to enroute controllers. They use radar equipment to monitor flight paths and work in buildings known as Terminal Radar Approach Control Centers. They also provide information to pilots such as weather conditions and other critical notices. Enroute controllers monitor aircraft once they leave an airport's airspace. The work at air route traffic control centers located throughout the country, which typically are not located at airports. The next stage is the area control, which um, has to do with air route traffic, or right, traffic that still have long distances to cover, uh, or traffic that are still at the air route phase. The air route phase is just uh, a phase of flight that does not accommodate landing or departure. They are just passing through. After the initial training, you come to the field. For you to have your rating, 
you need to go through rigorous and more like a regimental training of uh, it depend might take years availability of uh, controller to take your place when you are in training is a factor as well you have your aerodrome training you it's about some few months other three months to a year depending on this factor that i just mentioned and then for you to have your radar training also based on this factor it still take equal number of time some air traffic controllers work at the air traffic control systems command center these controllers monitor traffic patterns within the entire national airspace that could create bottlenecks in the system when they find a bottleneck they provide instructions to other controllers that help to prevent traffic jams their objective is to keep traffic levels manageable for the airport and for in-road controllers On our interview segment, we have two guests. One, the president of the Air Traffic Controllers Association in Nigeria. He says the ATC Day this year is an opportunity to call on government to address the challenges facing them, especially that of personnel shortage. There are quite a number of uh, agitations uh, and we are not shy away from any of them. In the area of uh, uh, working environment, we have approached the management, both NAMA ministry, to always uh, look into it and create a very enable uh, environment for us to, to work. Aviation is an innovation, things moving with technology. So what we are saying is that at times we need upgradement of systems. Uh, right now we are saying that we have inadequacy in manpower challenges and which we have pleaded with government, provide one or two solutions in order for us to be able to meet of the gap. Uh, in the area of training also, we want government to also invest in human capital development. Four or five years, we have quite a number of controllers who get to the retirement age and they are going, even right now, some of them are being re-engaged as a contract staff. But what we are saying now is that there is a, an avenue for government to do something whereby we have done that, they have done that for the pilot to increase the retirement age of controller from 60 to 65. The other, an air traffic controller himself, but now the Director of Operations at the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, Matthew Fajok, who tells us our government is committed to filling the human capacity gap. Yes, uh, the challenge with air traffic control manpower is uh, almost global. Uh, it takes years to train an air traffic controller, so even if they are recruited, uh, training takes time, certification, licensing, ratings takes time to get that. So nevertheless, uh, the Nigerian government has been very forthcoming as far as getting approval, especially with uh, the present government uh, under the current minister, uh, Senator Hadi Sirika. We've been getting yearly approvals uh, to recruit and to train. At the moment, we have two batches at the Aviation College. Uh, precisely one batch graduated uh, last week, Friday. The second batch is actually currently doing flying experience. And they started today at the Aviation College. They finished the air traffic training the last two years, but they're starting the flight training experience, which is required for air traffic controllers. So the next two months, we'll have that batch also out and then add to the existing manpower that is highly inadequate. Uh, training an air traffic controller takes time, like I said. Uh, it is something we have to plan, and it's a yearly recruitment process we do 
uh, take two batches, train them, and uh, we're hoping that in the next five years or thereabout, we should be able to have achieved meaningful uh, number of uh, trained and certified air traffic controllers. Uh, the number of new airports coming on stream almost every year. Uh, we have Bayelsa is almost uh, ready to restart. Uh, Ebon is ongoing. Uh, Damaturi in Yobe is also ongoing. Lafia yeah, and Nasarawa State is also almost completed. These are new airports that will require air traffic controllers also to be deployed to provide air traffic services in these areas. At 3,000 feet up in the cloudless sky, passengers sitting or sleeping and probably enjoying the journey, eating a meal or pouring through the movie channels. Here are five more weird things to think about when you fly. On land, water boils at 100 degrees. On a plane, however, the reduced pressure interferes with the boiling process and the water starts to boil at around 90 degrees. This is why it's hard to get a good tasting coffee when you're thousands of feet in the air. It's true, food does taste different when you're flying. Passengers are more dehydrated on a plane than when they're on the ground. The atmosphere dries out the mouth, nose, and also the taste buds. And as the plane climbs higher, the change in air pressure numbs about a third of the taste buds, causing food to taste bland. And that's according to experts. Each company has their own internal and unique rules. However, there's one rule identical for all of them. The first and the second pilots, without any exceptions, must eat different dishes. The first pilot eats the food given in the first and in the business class while the second is served with separate dishes. Thereby, airlines are reducing the risk of poisoning of all crew, leaving no one to fly the plane. Samoa Air, a South Pacific carrier, was the first to announce that they were to start charging passengers based on their weight. This sparked a debate on how overweight passengers should be treated when flying. It's still a gray area, but subsequently, Southwest and also American Airlines currently state on their website that you must buy two seats if you cannot fit into one. The wings are designed to move in this way, and this movement is entirely normal because what is happening is that the upward and downward movement of the plane's aluminum alloy body are rippling out along the wings. The tips of a large airliner wing, which can be 30 meters long, can move up and down as much as 3 meters during flight. This may seem very worrying, but is well within their tolerance for bending. The important thing to remember is that no modern aircraft has ever been brought down by turbulence Although passengers have been injured or even killed, either because they weren't wearing seat belts and hit their heads on the ceiling, or because heavy luggage fell out of the overhead lockers. After the break, catch the sight of the world's longest flight of almost 20 hours from New York in the United States to Sydney, Australia. To join us again.